Hi, my name is Karthik Swaminathan and I'm going to talk about light peak high speed interconnect technology. The present era is the era of connectivity. Think of any sort of information and it can be transferred to us within question of a little time, be it audio information, video information or any other form of data. Now talking about transferring data between our computer and the other peripherals, the first and the foremost standard that comes to our mind is universal serial bus. It is a medium speed serial data addressable bus system which can carry large amounts of data to a relatively short distance up to 5 meters. The present version USB 3.0 promises to provide theoretical speed of up to 5 Gbps. But Intel has unveiled the new interoperable standard called LightPeak which can transfer data between computers and the peripherals at a speed of 10 Gbps in both the directions with a maximum range of 100 meters that is much higher than USB or any other standard. The light peak also has the potential to scale its speed high up to 100 Gbps in the near future. What are the challenges faced by today's technologies? In the coming future, people would be using more and more electrical devices such as HD devices, MIDs and many more and user experience would depend on the huge volume of data capturing, transfer, storage and reconstruction. But existing electrical cable technology is approaching the practical limit for higher bandwidth and longer distance due to the signal degradation caused by electromagnetic interference and signal integrity issues. Higher bandwidth can be achieved by sending the signals down with more wires, but apparently this approach increases cost, power and the difficulty of PCB layout, which explains why serial links such as SATA, SAS and USB are becoming the mainstream. However, optical communications do not create EMI by using photonics rather than electrons, thus allowing higher bandwidth and longer distances. Besides, optical technology also allows for small form factors and longer and thinner cables. Why light peak technology? As explained earlier, the electrical wires generate electromagnetic field but photons don't. And also, since light has no mass, we can transfer data over long distances at higher speeds. Light peak also provides bidirectional transfer and it is hot pluggable, meaning it can be plugged or removed without affecting the operation of the system and thus no restart is required. And also, light peak supports all the protocols like HDMI, SATA, USB, PCI Express and DisplayPort. And also speeds of up to 10 Gbps can be sustained over 100 meters in length, which can be scalable up to 100 Gbps in the near future. These are the protocols that are being used for data transfer. Each of these requires a different connector and cable, but LightPeak replaces all of these and also requires only a single port that can run any of these protocols. Let us look at the comparison between LightPeak and USB 3.0. The LightPeak has four optical fiber cables, two for each direction, whereas the USB 3.0 has nine copper wires. The LightPeak speed varies from 10 gigabits per second to 100 gigabits per second, whereas the speed of USB 3.0 is 3 gigabits per second. The light peak is universal, meaning which it can run any of the protocols like HDMI, DisplayPort, PCI Express, USB, and SATA. But USB can only run the USB protocol. The maximum cable length in light peak is 100 meters, whereas the maximum cable length in USB is 9 meters. Looking at the graph of evolution of speed of the different protocols, looks like the USB 3.0 operates at 5 gigabits per second which is 10 times as good as USB 2.0 whereas the light peak operates at 10 gigabits per second which is twice as good as USB 3.0 and is also bidirectional. This is the architecture of the light peak technology. The lower level architecture is the light peak system that consists of the optical physical layer connectors, cables, and the common transport medium providing packet switched multiplexing. All the routing is established at the setup. The upper level of the architecture has the application specific protocols like HDMI, USB, etc. Each protocol is independent of the other providing performance isolation between them. These are the components of a light peak system. It consists of a fiber optic cable, a controller, an optical module, and a connector for each device.
The image on top shows a light peak cable and the one at the bottom shows a cable connected to a light peak connector. A light peak cable is 125 microns wide and has a maximum length of 100 meters. It has a plastic layer coating for protection. The connectors are the end of the optical fiber and they provide quick connection and removal. This is a light peak chip which consists of four connectors along with optical modules and a controller which is the heart of the light peak system. Now let us talk about the optical modules and the light peak controller. The optical module of a light peak system has four optical fibers, two for each direction. It consists of two VC cell lasers. VC cell lasers are vertical cavity surface emitting laser, which is a semiconductor based laser diode that emits a highly efficient optical beam vertically from its top surface. The optical module also has two photodetectors and an optical IC. All these fit into a 12 cross 12 millimeter structure. The optical module is basically responsible for light to electricity conversion and vice versa. The figure shows the component overview of a light peak system. As explained in the previous slide, the four optical fibers, the photodetectors, the lasers and the optical IC form the optical module. To the right of the optical module is the light peak controller which controls the transmission and reception of data. The controller chip does a priority based transfer. It handles all the protocols. The API helps to determine the protocol and places the data package in memory. Controller chip accesses these packets and sends to the destination over the optical link. The figure shows a light peak controller. It consists of a crossbar switch with multiple protocol adapters and light peak ports on either side. The host controller handles multiple protocols and is optimized for host side implementations and the peripheral controller is a single port single protocol optimized for specific usage. Now let's take a look at how mapping a protocol to light peak transport takes place. The light peak host controller receives the encoded protocol data payload along with the protocol header. This is then line coded that maps 64 bits of data as a 66 bit entity. The 66 bit entity is made by prefixing one of the two possible 2 bit preambles to the 64 bits to be transmitted. If preamble is 0 1, 64 bits are entirely data. If preamble is 1 0, an 8 bit type field follows 56 bits of data. Preambles 00 and 11 are not used. 01 and 10 guarantee that a bit transition takes place for every bit in 66 bits. It allows for easier clock or timer synchronization. This line coded data is then transferred over the optical fiber link. The figure shows end-to-end -end data transfer between a light peak host controller and a light peak device controller. The underlying protocol is untouched and the underlying encoding is recreated at the endpoint. Future client usage models. Light peak allows fast external storage where solid state devices and hard disk drives can transfer at very high speeds. It also provides high performance docking, better LAN connectivity, and can connect multiple PCs in a daisy chaining fashion where multiple devices are wired together in a sequence or a ring fashion. Industry Perspective Sony is excited about the potential for light peak technology that has been developing and believes that it could enable a new generation of high speed device connectivity. Apple along with Intel believes that light peak technology enables new wired connectivity solutions for mobile computers and smartphones and looks forward to working to create a global standard based on light peak technology.